Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Gem X, published by Demonware and developed by Keiko in 1991. On the title screen, we get a list of 99 names in the high score table, and you can see some Japanese text as well. to the controls where we can see that we can control a hand pointer on that screen we can move that thing left right up and down and by pressing that fire button we can change the gem color Keiko was a German company and all this manga art that you can see and all this text is unfortunately German even though it says Keiko JP in the bottom corner let's press that fire button and let's check this game out I love you. Good luck. Gem X is a puzzle game, and in this puzzle game, we have to transform these gems between one color and another color, and doing that will complete a puzzle. The completed puzzle is listed on the right hand side of the screen, and all you have to do is to mirror that on the left hand side of the screen and that will complete the level. This is set A. This is the first set of stages that we'll have to go through in the game. And if you get it wrong, you can see we can actually retry this by pressing the hotkey to try a different one. But we can definitely mess up these levels pretty quickly simply by clicking on the wrong item. We also have a time limit which ticks down. Yes, we can't spend all day long on these puzzles, and when we click on some of them, they will blow up and disappear, which will ruin the puzzle entirely. So you have to be absolutely sure on which ones that you want to change, otherwise, you'll find you will be unable to complete the puzzle. Some puzzles are easier than others, and sometimes you can complete those very easily indeed. This is the A level, so it's supposed to be the easiest of the lot. Unfortunately, it isn't that easy, and sometimes you can't really march straight into these gung-ho. You have to know what to do, and if you're just practicing with a game just like this, having not played it for many years, you might find yourself out of your depth. this one it isn't obvious what we're supposed to do and clicking on that one is not the right way to go because that reveals a purple gem and I'm not actually sure how to complete this particular puzzle you can see it is possible or maybe it isn't I have no idea but if you destroy too many of those the girl in the corner will eventually cry and you'll move on to another level even if it's the same stage that you've already completed you can see that we've already completed this one before but you can see we've completely messed it up this time it's 
So maybe that one was slightly different, and we are running out of lives, running out of time, and eventually the game will give up on us, and it will say, you've had your chance, you can't play this game, so therefore we're going to kick you off back to that main menu. So our first try at JMX in many years and that's my total 12th on the high score table because of course the makers of this game only completed the top 15 scores so it's pretty easy in fact it's a doddle to get into the top 10 so let's try this game again and let's see if we can get any further Once you've completed each puzzle and you know how to solve it, you can simply march straight through it. And some of these, if you get the easy ones, and I think there might be 12 stages in set A, I'm not quite sure, but they appear at random, and so you never know which ones you're going to get. And sometimes those can play fair, and sometimes they can play it very unfairly. So, again, if you know exactly what to do on each of these, you can just march straight through them. I like the Japanese speech bubble coming out of the girl's mouth and yeah, I wish that somebody had translated those things into English and then we could actually see what those things actually said. But we can't, so let's continue with that level. Let's see if we can make it. And that looks pretty similar to me. What are we missing? The bottom corner. Is that going to be possible or is that going to ruin everything? No, that's completed the level. That means that we get to move on to an outrun style screen where we only have 10 seconds to choose our next route. Prepare for round B and the password is Earthian. Now on round B, so you can expect this to be a bit harder, and as long as we are wise with our clicks, we can complete these puzzles, but it's not automatically obvious what all of these things on screen do. So you can see lots of icons all around the screen, some of which we've covered already. You can see in the top left hand corner, we're on stage B, screen 15. And we have one move remaining, and six level skips in which we can Skip the level, that's the enter key. Pressing the enter will skip, and you can see we're down to five now. And so you can see that some of the icons really do bear some significance on this level. If you know what to do, you just march straight through it. But if you don't, just like this, sometimes you only find out the solution after you've already messed it up. This game was coded by Thorsten Lamparter, and no information is available on him, apparently he's German, or perhaps not, and he coded this game, his only coded game on the Amiga. The graphics were created by Frank Matsk. And if you remember Frank Matsk, he also created the graphics for Apedia, and also moved on to Turrican 3 and the Dungeons of Avalon and its sequel which remained on an Amiga Mania cover disc. Dungeons of Avalon was released for free and well basically for the price of Amiga Mania. Great. 
Lastly, the music was, of course, created by Chris Hulesbeck, who was a member of KCOL, and he also memorably created the Turrican themes, and Apidia, and many other classic themes that we got on the Amiga. See, we're struggling through stage B at the moment, and stage B isn't particularly easy. You can see that one wrong move will set off that trap. And this thing relies on a sequence of colours, and if you get that sequence right, then it solves itself. And if you get the sequence wrong, it doesn't. So it's like exploding the time bomb and the dynamite in this case look at that reveals that we can either get through it no problem or look at this really bang our heads against a brick wall see in the very center of the screen we have a number of colors red green blue and purple and yellow and when you hit a red one in the center it will move two spaces so it will turn to blue and the ones north south east and west of that will turn one color so they will move to green that's pretty complicated and as you can see, it's not easy to explain or demonstrate in a play guide. And if you find any purple ones on the level and click them, unfortunately they will blow up. And so... Clicking on the purple ones is a stick of dynamite, in this case, if you click on that it will simply blow up and you will have no other choice. And so we were very close to completing this level and by analysing those colours, again if you click on the purple ones they will blow up so I'll never click on them. So it has to be some other colour that you can click on apart from the purple ones. So that narrows it down to the blue, the green and the red and I'm not sure what happens when the gold ones blow up, maybe they turn back to red again. There isn't much you can do if you mess up that situation with two moves left in order to complete this. And one move and zero. That means that we don't have to skip the levels. And we have one level skip available according to that. So look at this level. Sometimes it really is some taxing matters to try and get through this game. GMX is definitely a puzzle game that many people had on the Amiga along with Logical and I did record Logical for this series but I decided not to put that up together because Logical is a pretty boring game where you're just matching colours together, it didn't need a play guide whatsoever. But this one does need a play guide because many players are confused to how to play it and how to progress in the game. It's definitely a knack of maybe looking at those colours and knowing the green one will move to purple and that gives you some idea of maybe which one to click on. But if you get that wrong of course, looking at those purple ones on the other side, we got that wrong so there's no way back unfortunately. That's another level successfully messed up. So, while I scratch my head over this, there's nothing else which can be done, 
and can be one damn side of this game. Sometimes you're playing it and having fun and then you'll find a screen which is torture and no matter what you do, you can't rescue the situation so you can see nothing is going on now. That will mean that it's game over. We've reached number six in the high scores and that's slightly better than we got before and it calls these mines rather than levels so we're on mine B apparently. So when I recorded this it was what 2018 so that's why it says done 18. So let's try again for the third and the final time to play this game and let's try again to try to successfully explain it so that people who can't get their head around this will have some kind of an idea. The Christmas pudding, as you can see, mean that we only need to complete four screens in order to complete this level and the Christmas puddings are essential because if we get through those very quickly it means we have less screens to get through to get through the level. So if you romp through the other ones very quickly you can see we only need two Christmas puddings remaining. So you can see that some of this game relies on the colours. The middle one will move two steps and the ones around it will move one step in the colours. So sometimes you can look at that and you can think, right, well, if I click on the red one, it's going to change to blue and the rest of it will change around it. Therefore, that's got to be the one. But sometimes even following the colour order is pretty difficult. And sometimes it's a case of waiting for the easy ones to show up and then you can simply run straight through them at high speed. We've got two more to complete and if you look at the right, it's a spot the difference competition. All you have to do is to look on the right hand side of the screen and work out the central part of the chaos. And if you can work out the very central part of the chaos, then that means everything will revolve around it and that will transform into the ones that you're looking for. on to round C and in between every round it will give us a picture of a semi-naked Japanese inspired girl who isn't in fact Japanese and some of those are pretty risque but later on look at that straight through it so if you follow the AC method these ones are slightly easier than the D route and unlike Outrun it works the opposite way if you follow the bottom route it's a lot easier than if you try to go the top way so look at that, the Christmas pudding say we need three left to complete this level. Looking at the spot the difference competition, it means that we click on this and this and we've completed it. So it looks like the C levels are actually easier than the A levels that we were struggling on with before. So spot the difference, you can see on the right hand side, the gold one, if we click on the top, one of the blue ones that should change and that should complete that section and that means that that area is now complete. We've got one more screen to clear before we move on to the next one and spot the difference. What is it? Well we can see a gold one there on the right hand side and in between two purple ones let's click on that and again that completes it. Take another detour and let's, well, let's try the F's and let's see if the easy ones, and look at that, being wrapped up by a snake. It's F and bad man is the password. I'm not sure how you activate those. Maybe you press space on that title screen. So we're now on stage F and I think there's maybe 20 screens and let's spot the difference. That blue one there will change. I think that's right, one will disappear. So looking in the middle, there is a purple one right in the middle. So click on that and yet again, that should complete it. So all I'm doing at the moment is running a spot the difference competition. You can see it's very obvious what I'm actually doing. The purple one there, that's got to be the one. So, well, or the green one, because we don't want to activate the one to the east because that will change colour. So it's got to be the green one on the first column which changes all these to the right one and 
I think, anyway, it's pretty taxing once you get this far into the game. Let's be brave, and that does it, but somehow we've messed that up somewhere, and I think we clicked on the wrong one. If we clicked on one lower down, that would have completed it. So you can see some of these puzzles aren't hard once you know what to do, and once you've got the spot the difference thing locked down, it means you can romp through even these difficult levels and you can get those into the bag. And spotting the difference, it's add the red one and the green one. Did I get that right? Yes, we did. We've got five Christmas puddings remaining before we go on to that next level. Looking at the scores for this game, CMVG awarded it the lowest score with 75%, CO Amiga gave it 76%, the current Lemon Amiga score is 79%, Amiga Computing gave this 80%, Generation 4 gave it 82 Dato Magazine gave it 83%, Zero also gave it 83%, Joystick gave it 85%, Amiga Joker awarded this game 86%. That leaves the highest scores to Amiga Format, who gave this game 88%, and Amiga Power also gave this game 88%. Stuart Campbell said this is the most fun you'll ever have, having your brain tortured, and he said that the addiction value really came to the fore after a few weeks of playing this, where he just kept on coming back and back, having made lots of tiny silly mistakes, and it's those infuriating head-banging mistakes, which means this game can be a doddle for those who have that kind of a brain, and spot the difference, or you can go by the colours as well, if you want to do it the logical way, so there are two ways to play this game, and I'd probably give this maybe a 7 out of 10, it's not as addictive as Tetris and all the amazing brain puzzlers that we got on the Amiga, it's not even Boston Bomb Club, but what it is, is a very easy colour match game which is convoluted and it makes it very hard on itself by trying to match these colours. I think I'm supposed to click on the blue one, slightly higher up, there you go, and then the blue one there, that will change everything and that will complete the level. We've got two Christmas puddings left and what might seem easy is in fact quite difficult. So by the time you get to this stage you can see this game is actually quite a joy to play and you can see I'm having quite some fun with it. draws us to the end of this particular play guide and I hope you can see where I went wrong and where I went right and how to play this and it's not that hard but it's not that easy either. So thank you for checking out this play guide and review and I hope this has opened the door some of you guys. Look at that, we only got 7th on the high score table. And then we got to D level before, so D gives us a bit more score. So you can see this game is great, but it's not the best puzzler that we got on the Amiga. Thank you.